Hello, everybody. How you doing? Dwayne here with Sims Ministries. It is Thursday, the 25th of January. And yes, it is that time again. We're going to be getting into our study. You've already got it. Man, this has been such a good study. I tell you what, I hope you guys are enjoying it as much as I am. I love going through these studies because it just shows more and more what Jesus provided for us through his death, burial, and resurrection, through the stripes on his back, we've already got everything that we need. Everything that we need, we've already got it. If you're a believer in Jesus Christ, amen. Let's pray, and we're going to jump right into the lesson today. Father, we thank you so much, again, for um, just your miraculous grace and how you love us beyond what we can even fathom, that you would send your own son to die for us. Jesus, that you would come and die on a cross to reconcile us back with the Father. Oh, I just praise you, and I thank you so much, Lord, for what you've done. I pray this word goes out today as far and as wide as it can go. I declare it. In the name of Jesus, amen. All right, we are in lesson number 10 of 26 lessons um, here in this particular study. You've already got it. Lesson number 10 is where God moves, and we're going to jump right into it and get with it here. If you have your Bible, get it out because we're going to be going through a lot of different scriptures here. And, uh, in fact, let me get things turned to where I need to be for the scriptures. There we go. Okay. Yeah, that's the outline. Uh, which is, reminds me, you can go to awmi.net slash, let me get my slash right, for S. G420. That's awmi.net slash SG420. And you can download the outlines, the discipleship questions, the scriptures. You can download everything for free. And it doesn't cost you a thing. And then each week, you can, um, we're in lesson 10. Um, each week, you can get online right here with us. And go through the lesson with us. Amen. All right, just a second. Let me get there. Let me get there. Okay, there we go. That's what I want. Wow. Okay. Lesson 10 Where God Moves. Daniel clearly exemplifies the reality of the spiritual realm. He prayed to receive revelation knowledge concerning Jeremiah's prophecy, which at the time appeared to not be coming to pass. You can find that in Daniel 9 and 2. Do we have that? Yes, we do. Let's read that together here real quick. In the first year of his reign, I, Daniel, understood by books the numbers of the years whereof the word of the Lord came to Jeremiah, the prophet, that he would accomplish 70 years in his desolations of Jerusalem. Okay. In Jeremiah 25, 11, it says, And this whole land shall be a desolation and an Astonishment, and these nations shall serve the king of Babylon 70 years. More than 70 years had already come and gone. However, the Lord showed Daniel later in Daniel 10 that this was really 70 weeks of the year, 490 years, not 70 years. So Daniel asked for this revelation and began to pray. Uh, Daniel 3... Daniel 9, 3 and 4. And I set my face unto the Lord God to seek by prayer 
and supplications with fasting and sackcloth and ashes. And I prayed unto the Lord my God and made my confession and said. His prayer continues down through the verse of 19. And here's his prayer. O Lord, hear. O Lord, forgive. O Lord, hearken. And do not defer not. And do defer not for thine own sake. O my God, for thy city and thy people are called by thy name. Mm. And whilst this is again, we're just continuing in Daniel 9, 20 and 22. And whilst I was speaking and praying and confessing my sin and the sin of my people Israel and presenting my supplications before the Lord my God for the holy mountain of God, yea, while I was speaking in prayer, even the man Gabriel, the same angel who appeared to Zacharias and Mary in Luke 1, 19, whom I had seen in a vision at the beginning, being caused to fly swiftly, touched me about the time of the evening ablation. And he informed me and talked with me and said, O Daniel, I am now come forth to give thee skill and understanding. It took Daniel about three minutes to pray this prayer. While he was still praying, the angel Gabriel showed up and announced, I've come with your answer. Man, wouldn't it be wonderful if every time everything you prayed for manifests itself in three minutes? Man, I, I know I would love that. Notice when, when it was that God actually answered. At the beginning of thy supplications, the commandment came forth, and I am closer to show thee, for thou art greatly beloved. Therefore, understand the matter and consider the vision. <coughs> Excuse me. Daniel 9.23. Broke <coughs> that cough. God moved in the spiritual world. Guys, get a hold of this. God moved in the spiritual world and gave the commandment at the very beginning of Daniel's prayer. Yet, it took approximately three minutes for Gabriel to show up. When did the, the prayer get answered? Immediately. Why not instantaneous manifestation? Most people assume that God doesn't have to deal with such things as time, space, or distance. However, this is a clear biblical example where God gave a command to one of his angels, and it took approximately three minutes for him to show up. That's not a long period of time. But it plainly reveals that God moved in the spiritual realm before there was any physical evidence of it. Boy, this is, this, this is something to get a hold of, guys. When you're praying for your healing and everything else, you are healed in the spiritual realm. Now, it may take three minutes. It may take whatever to get it into the physical evidence of it, but it's there. Most, most people believe that when God wills something to happen, the very moment he thinks it, boom, there's an instantaneous manifestation in the natural realm. They don't think the Lord has to deal with any of the restrictions or limits. However, this example shows God gives the command, and it takes approximately three minutes for it to happen. I know a lot of you are sitting out there, man, aren't you splitting hairs here? Hey, it's bringing up a point here on things. The Bible doesn't explain what, has happened, what was happening during that brief period of time. Maybe. Gabriel needed to pack. Maybe he was on the other side of the universe, and it took him three minutes to cover a hundred billion light years. Who knows what's going on? But establishes the principle that God commanded it in the spirit realm before there was a physical manifestation. Guys, we're going to keep on this point that we have got to be looking and believing in the spiritual realm. And then we've got to bring that in to the physical realm. And that's what we've been studying about all through here is how to do that, how to bring that into 
the physical realm. Daniel prayed again in Daniel 10. If anything, his heart should have been encouraged and his faith strengthened after receiving such a powerful and relatively quick answer in chapter 9. Although the same man prayed, the results were different. Now, we're leading up to something here, so I want you to really pay attention to what this is saying in Daniel. I like using Daniel as an example of how God answers prayer. If I illustrated this point with a simp- an example of my life, and we're talking about Andrew Womack here, not my particular life, you'd be tempted to dismiss it saying, well, you know, you're different from me. You must be one of God's favorites. How many ever heard that mess before? Well, you're, you're one of God's favorites. You're, you're, you're a pastor. You're this or you're that or you're a leader. And, you know, God is no respecter of persons. You must be one of God's favorites. Some people he just responds to better than others. You can't say that about Daniel. This same man prayed and received two totally different results. One was in three minutes. One was in three minutes. Keep that in mind. This time, it took three weeks. Not three minutes before Daniel saw the manifestation of what he prayed for. Are you with me here? In those days, I, Daniel, was mourning three full weeks. I ate no pleasant bread, neither came flesh nor wine in my mouth, neither did I anoint myself at all till three whole weeks were fulfilled. You can find that in Daniel 10, verses 2 and 3. Daniel fasted and prayed again, but the results were worse, not better. he done that over here in chapter 9, and the answer was in three minutes. He's over here in chapter 10 praying again. The answer, it's three weeks. He still doesn't have an answer. Here. Here's the question. Uh, Let's see. Hang on. We'll get to that in just a minute. And behold, a hand touched me. Now, this is Daniel 10, verses 10 and 11. Behold, a hand touched me, which set me upon my knees and upon the palms of my hands. And he said unto me, O Daniel, A man greatly beloved, understand the words that I speak unto thee, and stand upright, for unto thee I am now sent. And when he had spoken this word unto me, I stood trembling. Now that's in uh, Daniel chapter 10, verses 10 and 11. Here's the question I know a lot of people are asking right here, because I've asked this same question myself. Why does God answer some prayers in three minutes and other prayers in three weeks or three months or three years or 30 years or whatever the case may be? Have you ever wondered about this like I have? Have you ever seen God do something quickly for you and on other occasions it takes weeks, months, or even years? Through all that time you stood believing and wondered, God, Why are you doing this? What's taking you so long to answer my prayer? That's actually an invalid question. The next verse shows why. Daniel 10, verse 12. They said unto me, Fear not, Daniel, for from the first day thou didst set thine heart to understand and to chasten thyself before thy God, thy words were heard, and I am come for thy words. God gave the command and answered on the very first day, but it didn't manifest until three weeks later. Why? There was demonic oppression get a hold of this folks there was demonic oppression 
Daniel 10, verse 13. But the prince of the kingdom of Persia, which is a demonic power, withstood me one and twenty days. That's three weeks. But lo, Michael, one of the chief princes, another angel, came to help me, and I remained there with the king of Persia. In other words, there was a demonic attack that was coming against these angels that was bringing the answer to the message, or to the prayer, excuse me. Three weeks and additional help were required for this angelic messenger to break through the demonic oppression and manifest Daniel's answer. Let's let that sink in for just a minute here. Let that sink in here because, you know, you can read through these things and you can just kind of go past them pretty quick. But this shows right here that at both times, the answer was given immediately. Three minutes, it was manifest in the first time. Second time, three weeks because of the oppression of evil. God moved instantly both times. It wasn't that he answered in three minutes the first time and three weeks the second. God answered Daniel's prayer immediately on both occasions. God wasn't the variable. See, this is, this is where we get messed up. We keep wanting to blame God for things. That, well, I guess he's just not listening to me, or I, I'm not worthy, or, uh, you know... I, Fill in the blank. You can put in the blank. God wasn't the variable. He didn't change. God remained constant. In the old covenant, Daniel was looking forward in faith to what Jesus would do. Today, as a New Testament believer, we look back to what God has already done through Christ. It's a done deal. Took me a while, folks, but when I got a hold of this, I was like, oh, my goodness, it's, it's, it's a done deal. I don't have to beg, plead, fight this. Now, the enemy wants to come against me and put thoughts in my head and all these other things. That, what did Jesus do when he fought against the enemy? Quoted the word. <coughs> it's a done deal. God doesn't answer some prayers in three minutes and others in three weeks. The Lord answers everything immediately. The supply is already there. It has already been done. The provision has been made before you ever had the need. Let's, let's just stop there for just a second. And, and let's rest on that for just a second. Whenever you came to Christ... Did God say, well, Jesus, back on back on the cross. Dwayne's wanting to give his life to you. <coughs> You're going to have to die all over again. <coughs> <coughs> no. He said in his word, it is finished. When I need healing, just like I needed healing a year ago this time, I was in Barnes Hospital with a brain bleed, a stroke. Healing had already been provided for me. Back when they put the stripes on his back, that healing was already provided for me. I just have to accept the fact that I've got healing. Now, old Satan, he was trying to take me out. Well, he's a liar and he's a loser. He ain't taking me out. He's a liar. And it's a loser. <coughs> Excuse me, folks. <coughs> it's not God moving differently for different people. Rather, it's people who receive differently. God has already done his part. That's the end of it. He's, he's already done it. It's finished. But there are things that hinder what he does in the spiritual realm from coming into the physical realm. What are those things? Satan, 
the enemy. Many people wrongly assume that the devil is all-powerful and all-knowing. Functionally, they believe that Satan is more faithful than God. They aren't sure if the Lord will answer their prayers, even if they do everything just right. But they're absolutely convinced that the devil will devour them if they do even one little thing wrong. I can remember as a kid, uh, <clears throat> they'd have testimony service. Remember that? And old sister so-and-so would get up, oh, I got to tell you, the devil has been on me today. He just will not get off of me and my family. We have dealt with him, and we're doing everything we can to try to get him off of us. They think the devil is always there and never misses a trick. The enemy's doing this, and Satan's doing that. He's saying this and saying that, blah, 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 blah. You need to recognize that there is only one devil, and he's not omnipresent. See, that's something that shocked me a long time ago. <clears throat> He's not omnipresent like God. He can't be at multiple places at one time. He can only be in one place at a time. So for every, belie every believer to say that Satan has personally spoke to and tempted us each and every day is absolutely incorrect. Yes, the kingdom of darkness is against us, but we give the devil way too much credit. <clears throat> He's not all-powerful. He doesn't always do the right things. It is very possible that the devil missed it in Daniel 9. Perhaps he was out licking his wounds, sulking and pouting, and misjudged how dangerous Daniel was. Maybe Satan was on vacation. You ever think about that? <laughs> Maybe he was tired and sleepy. We give the devil too much recognition. Man, I've seen that recently. <clears throat> I started really watching some guys and, and really thought they were going somewhere, but everything's a demon. Everything's the devil. Everything... You've got to pray this devil out of that and pray this devil out of that. You know what? Jesus Christ died on the cross to break all curses. Just rest in that. If you've got a demon, cast him out. <clears throat> you have to go through all this. Cast it out. Cast it out of you. Cast these little imps out of you. It's going to be crazy when we realize just how stupid these little things are. We give the devil too much recognition. Anyone who fights against God sure isn't bright. <laughs> I mean, how bright can some of these little imps be thinking that they could fight against God? I'm not saying he's stupid. It's just that he misses it sometimes. He misses it a lot of times. He has the same tricks over and over and over again. <clears throat> he didn't come up with nothing new. Did God really say that? Did God really say if you eat from that tree that you'd surely die? No, he wants, you want to be just as smart as he is. See, that's what Satan wants. You know, he wanted to be worshiped that's why he tempted jesus when jesus was here worship me and i will give you this why 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 do you think satan was able to say that <clears throat> because mankind give over the authority to this world to satan jesus came and took it back amen so in daniel 9 daniel's prayer got through to god and gabriel appeared when the an with the answer in three minutes. Satan wasn't even a factor. But after Daniel received such a powerful revelation and prophesied several important elements concerning the Messiah, the devil, <clears throat> he made sure Daniel didn't pay, pray unopposed 
ever again. Satan, not God or Daniel, was the variable. Sometimes he fights us. Sometimes he doesn't. I don't know all the reasons for that, but we give the devil way too much credit. Boy, this is good. When we think he's consistent and always does things right. Satan blows it most of the time. <clears throat> Scripture gives no indication that demon demons reproduce and have baby demons. Therefore, it's safe to say that the number of evil spirits working on the earth hasn't grown over the century and millennia. Either there are a huge number of demons <clears throat> per person back in Adam and Eve's day, or there's a lack of demons today. There are at least 6 billion people on the planet now. If everyone has a personal demon, then back in the early days, there must have been 6 billion of them attacking Adam and Eve. <laughs> Think about that for a while. And their children. However, if there aren't that many to begin with, then today there's a shortage of demons to go around. Personally, I don't believe the devil can do anything he tries to do. He's not limitless in his ability to fight us. I think Satan just lets some people go because he's short-handed. Hallelujah. He can be short-handed all day long as far as I'm concerned. So Daniel, for whatever reason, got his prayer through to God without resistance in Daniel 9. But Satan hindered his prayer in chapter 10. When most believers pray today, they don't see their answers immediately manifest. They get mad at God and wonder what's going on. Come on, man. I, I've, I've been there myself. Hey, man, what's going on? Instead of saying, oh, God, I prayed and nothing has happened, when will you answer me? Pray, Father, I know you are faithful. Oh, I know you are faithful. Thank you for answering me. I know it's almost manifest. Don't lose your faith just because you've been waiting three weeks for a manifestation or three years or 30 years or whatever. What would, happen, what would have happened if Daniel had moved out of faith and quit praying on the 20, 20th day <clears throat> in Daniel 10? He easily could have reasoned, well, God answered my prayer last time in three minutes, but this time tomorrow I'll have three weeks, three whole weeks, I quit. How many has done that? I've not seen what uh, I think I'm supposed to have here, so I'm done. I, 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 you know, I quit. <laughs> well, there's something. If Daniel had done that, his answer wouldn't have manifested, even though God had already given the commandment. See, now listen to this. God had already given the commandment, and the messenger was on his way. The demonic opposition would have prevailed had Daniel withdrew his faith. God does things according to the power that is at work in us. That's why we must believe Faith is the bridge that God's provision uses to cross out of the spirit realm into the physical realm. So we were talking earlier about, well, what does it take to bring it out of the spiritual realm into the physical realm? Faith. <clears throat> we must provide the bridge. God is a spirit, and he moves in the spirit world. Whether that's spiritually true or whether what's spiritually true ever manifests itself in the natural realm isn't dependent on God answering our prayers. It's upon whether we can, by faith, reach over in the spiritual realm and bring it into the physical manifestation, what he's already done. Our faith provides the bridge for God to cross over into the physical world. I know there's some of you sitting there right now. God can do anything he wants to do. Yes. I'm not I'm not I'm not, <clears throat> not going to argue that point whatever. 
but he chooses to work this way. He give authority to this world to mankind, and mankind blew it. It took Jesus coming back to take that back. Now it's just simple faith. Simple faith. God doesn't do things without us, and we certainly can't do anything without him. Why he wants to work through an old country boy like me, <clears throat> I don't know, but I praise the Lord every day that he does. God is the one who must provide something in the first place in the spirit, but then he flows through us to get it into the natural realm. Man, that's an awesome revelation. Authority plus power equals responsibility. I know this is a little long here tonight, but that's all right. This is so good. Daniel preserved in prayer. He may or not have understood all of these things, but he knew God had an answer, and until it manifested, simply refused to quit. Prior to the angel's arrival and explanation, the word doesn't indicate that Daniel knew what was happening in the spiritual world as he prayed. <clears throat> From his per uh, perceptive, it may have seemed like God was totally silent and ignoring him, yet Daniel preserved and continued praying in faith. However, even if God had shown him that a demonic power was hindering that message from being answered, Daniel couldn't have done anything about it. Why? Old Testament saints didn't have any power or authority over the devil. As a New Testament believer, God has given authority and power. With that comes responsibility. And see, there, right there is what people don't want. I don't want responsibility. I'm going to put it all off on God. If God don't move, it wasn't supposed to be done. I'm not taking any responsibility. James 4, 7. Submit yourself, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. If you don't resist the devil, guess what? He doesn't flee. It's God's power standing behind you making it work, but nonetheless, the devil flees from you. You can't ask God to rebuke the devil for you. He has given you the authority to do that. Whew. Many Christians today pray and then passively stand and stand and stand in faith, patiently waiting until finally, maybe, they receive their answer. If they do receive it, because it's like a dog with a bone, refusing to let go, they stand there through all the pain, circumstances, and persecution the devil throws at them. They receive their answer by default because they're still standing after Satan has hurled his worst. These believers simply fail to recognize that the devil is hindering their answers from being manifest and to exercise the power and authority that they have been given to do something about it. Well, Dwayne, what are you talking about power and authority? You speak to the enemy. You speak to the, that mountain. You tell it to get out of the way. Well, I've done that. Keep speaking. Keep speaking to that mountain. See, so many times, well, I, I, I'm praying for my healing, and it just seems like there's something that just keeps coming. Keep speaking. Just keep speaking that. The Word says, I am healed. As a born-again believer, you don't have to pray the Old Testament people like the Old, Pest the Old Testament people did. For the sake of illustration, let's say Daniel was born again with the privileges of the New Testament believer. In Daniel 10, after praying and not seeing his answer manifest within three minutes, he could have said, God, you're the same yesterday, today, and forever. If you give the commandment at the beginning of my supplication last time, I know you did the same thing this time. You're already answered, Father. I thank you that it's on the way. 
Since you've already given the command, would you please tell me what's the holdup? Boy, isn't that a different way of praying? Isn't that a different? God, I know you've already you've already sent the answer. Instead, oh Lord, Lord, I don't know what I'm gonna do. I don't know how I'm gonna make it. I'll tell you what, I can't do this and I can't do that. Blah, blah, blah. God would have shown Daniel there's a demonic, demonic opposition. <clears throat> All right. God would have shown Daniel there's a demonic opposition against your prayers. Then he could have stood up and rebuked the demonic power. As a born-again believer, Daniel could have taken authority over the devil and commanded him to get out of the way. This would have dramatically shortened the period of time between amen, the end of the prayer, and there it is, manifestation. Daniel could have done that as a New Testament believer. As an Old Testament saint, he couldn't. <clears throat> All he could do was stand. If you can understand these principles, you'll have a great comfort knowing that God has already done it. He has already commanded your answer. But it must come from the spiritual world into the physical world. There are a number of things that can happen to hinder that. We don't have enough time in this study guide to list everything God has shown, but we'll give you several examples to help illuminate it. And we'll be getting into that next time. My goodness. Next lesson is the answer is in the spirit. You want to know where your answer is? In the spirit. In the spirit realm. That's where your answer is at. Is in the spirit realm. I tell you guys, <clears throat> it took me a long time to break away from old religious thoughts. And, and I know you're probably sitting there scratching your head right now. But if you will get into the Word and you will study this out, I mean, right there is Scripture. In Dan Go into Daniel yourself. Read this out for yourself. You know, people go, well, God can do anything that he wants to. Yes, he does. But there are oppositions because of the world that we live in. See, so I, I grew up that way. Well, there, yeah, I mean, whatever God says, that's the way it is. And that's exactly true. But there's oppositions. There's free will. And I know that word scares a lot of people too. But there is free will. I, I You know, if someone says, I don't choose to accept that, I don't accept, well, then you're not going to get that i mean that's just plain and simple well i don't accept that uh healing today is for today okay well then get out of the way and let other people get healed because you're just taking up space <clears throat> i'm sorry to be that blunt about it but that's exactly what it is you're just uh oh, i can't believe you'd say something like that well believe it guys listen <laughs> We're in a day and time right now. There's no time to be messing around, jacking around here. Not at all. People are getting uh, beat up by the enemy when they don't have to, uh, especially Christian people. And, and, and if you're not a Christian and you happen to stumble across this, would you please, please, uh, if you need prayer, or anything, go to simsministries.org. Leave us a message with a name and a number, and we will get back to you. We'll pray with you. We'd love to lead you to Jesus Christ. Um, I'm telling you, that this is the only way. Jesus is the only way. So good to be with you. I hope you are enjoying this. We'll be back here tomorrow with our daily devotional. But until then, let's go out. And let's bring someone to Jesus. Amen. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.